Welcome to another episode of IGCC Biology. Today we're going to be looking at uh, section 3 of the syllabus, movement in and out of cells. In this video we're going to be only going to be covering the core aspects of the syllabus where in the next video we'll be covering the supplementals. Now what this section really wants you to be able to do is just um, know and explain the three main types of transport that we've got. Uh, we've got diffusion, osmosis and active transport and um, their roles in the movement of particles in and out of cells. So in this video we'll be doing just that. So starting off with diffusion, um, definition wise it's just the net movement of particles from a region of higher concentration to low concentration down a concentration gradient. Now if you take a look at this diagram here you can see that the blue dots represent particles and on the left hand side you have much more of them than on the right hand side. Now because concentration is just um, how much of a substance you have per volume you can see that uh, there is much more concentration of these blue particles on the left hand side than the right hand side. So you've got a concentration gradient that goes down from the, uh, from the left to the right. Okay, now particles are always moving because they've got something called kinetic energy. Now, law says if you have a concentration gradient like so, more particles or there will be a net movement of particles from the region of higher concentration to a lower concentration. Now it does not mean that no particles will be moving from you know the right hand side to the left hand side because it will, but the, um, more particles will be moving on the opposite direction from the uh, left to the right uh, just to equalize that concentration. Next up is osmosis. Now you can think of osmosis um, as the fusion of water, but it's not exactly the same as uh, the previous example. So definition-wise, it's the net movement of water from a region of higher water potential to lower water potential down a water potential gradient and across a partially permeable membrane. Now don't get confused by the term water potential, it just means if you take a look at the um, the definition of a high water potential, it just means a high concentration of water. But because we don't really associate uh, water with concentration, we use the term water potential. So high water potential just means there's a lot of water, low, poten low water potential means that there isn't a lot of water. Um, <clears throat> and partially permeable membrane is uh, just a membrane that only lets some particles through, uh, not all. So there are two parts to understanding osmosis. So first of all, um, if you take a look at this diagram here, um, I have got a I've got a box that's separated into two compartments um, by a semi-permeable membrane with uh, these little holes in them. Now the blue dots represent water molecules, and the purple bigger dots represent solute molecules or just any substances that are dissolved in the water. Now you can see that in the right box. Uh, you've got four of these purple solutes and on the left box you only have one. So you might be compelled into thinking by uh, the law of diffusion before that these purple solutes should be moving into the left hand box. However, you've got something that's stopping it from doing so and it is the semi-permeable membrane because the holes within the semi-permeable membrane are too small for these uh, purple dots or these purple molecules to fit through. So these purple molecules won't be able to move. So um, now we'll take a look at the second part of um, the definition where the blue dots, the water molecules. Now these water molecules are definitely small enough to pass through the, uh, the holes of the semi-permeable membrane. So if you take a, take a look at the right hand uh, side of the box, you can see because these purple uh, solutes are taking up so much space, it, the water molecules are fewer in the right compartment than the left. So the left compartment has a higher water potential and um, the right compartment has low water potential just because of the fact that the solutes are taking up much more space um, on the right compartment than the left. Okay. Now, just like diffusion, water molecules 
will have a net movement going from high water potential to low water potential. Okay, so it's a dynamic process. So um, water will be moving in here and there. So from right to left, left to right. However, there will be a resultant movement and resultant um, movement of water going from the left hand side to the right hand side. It's just because there's more water on the left hand side of the box than the right hand side. So that's osmosis. Now, active transport is the use of energy to transport particles from a region of low concentration to a high concentration against the concentration gradient. Now, drawing you a really simple diagram here, but I'd like you to pay attention first of all to uh, the first part of the diagram where you've got these green dots which, uh, which represent uh, molecules, and clearly the left hand side has fewer concentration than the right hand side and uh, this is separated by this barrier here um, with a carrier protein which I'll explain to you soon right in the middle of it. So uh, this is the concentration gradient. Now the purpose of active transport is to go against the fusion and um, transport molecules from low concentration to high concentration. Okay, So this is against the concentration gradient. So what happens is these carrier proteins have something called an active site that is really, really specific. And it's specific in a way that it only fits these green molecules, okay? So one of these green molecules will um, end up in that space there, okay? So it'll fit right in. And using energy, using energy, this molecule is going to change shape in a way that it will make the green molecule that was originally outside of the barrier, inside of the barrier, where there's actually a higher concentration. Okay, so what we just did is use energy to change the uh, change the shape of the molecule uh, to drag in a molecule from a low concentration gradient to a high concentration gradient, and um, this is against the concentration gradient, and that's why we need energy to do it. Okay, because otherwise, um, it would just it would just be like uh, diffusion where the natural flow is to go from high to low concentration, but we're doing the opposite this time, so uh, energy is required to go against that gradient. So uh, that covers the fundamentals of the three types of transport, uh, passive diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. Any questions, comment below. Uh, next video, we'll, uh, we're going to be covering the supplemental curriculum of Section 3. Cool. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.